Oh, that cuts nice. That cuts very nice. Two things that I want to tell you today. The first is I actually brought two left-handed gloves. I don't know how that happened, but I somehow did it. And the second thing is we're testing the new saw today. So actually when I first started to do the video, I was located over here. And I noticed that there was like a little bit of a skunky smell. And these two lovely ladies behind me pointed out that there's actually a dead skunk right here behind me. Oh man. So there he is. Poor little guy. So we're moving. We're moving over there. Thanks to the keen eye of these two adventurers right here. So now that we've moved to a more secure location, I can get into the details. And to start off, I'd like to thank everybody for the comments that they had put in the last video because I've basically incorporated almost every single one. So thank you very much for it. Sometimes when you um, design as a group, as opposed to a single person, you get much more um, stronger results. I'll show this to you guys right now. And I think you're going to agree that the uh, primary improvement is the storage of the blade, which is now fully enclosed inside here. The intent is that it gets positioned in a groove on one side and locked in place with the eye bolt on the other. And ideally, you would have an elastic band or something around there, which keeps it nice and snug. To open this is quite simple. The first thing you do is you take the eyelet and you slip it off the end of the saw like so. Then from the other side, you pull the blade out of the groove and it's simply a matter of folding these two down. At this point, you slip the eyelet back on the blade. You rotate this actually 180 degrees and you'll see that there is a variable thickness washer there for the two different settings and you put that into here you have to make sure the wing nut is close to the end but not off you'll be able to slide this into the groove you can see it fits right in there tighten that up Make sure that the blade goes into the alignment slot. That's the anti-rotate feature that I put in based on a bunch of uh, input and feedback that I got from you guys. Once it's nicely snug in there, you're good to go. We are going to test this saw today. We're going to do the calculation for level of effort and we're gonna compare it to the other big saw that I use for my uh, canoe trips or my you know, luxury trip sort of thing. But I wanted to go over the improvements that this saw has over the one that I showed in the last video. Because they're pretty substantial and honestly, they're mostly based on comments that you had. So first and foremost is the blade storage. Um, a number of comments all outlined that, you know, essentially you wouldn't even carry a backpacking saw if you couldn't store the blade properly. So I took that to heart and what I did was I extended on the top of the pivot points and I dropped the spacer locations down and as these fold up it allows a nice pocket inside there to hold the blade. You'll have seen when I take it out that the way that it locks is there's a groove on one side and the eyelet actually holds it on the other side so it actually can't even fall out. On top of that I took a look at the forces and what kind of the materials that were used in some of the high stress areas and the biggest ones that I identified were that I used aluminum screws in the pivot point and I guess the pivot point stop. Now those screws, I didn't see any failures or yielding when I was actually using the saw, but I just figured if this is going to be a product, you know, used for long term, that I'd replace those. So these are black stainless steel, uh, you know, which has a shear strength many times higher than aluminum. Another thing that came up in the comments was a bunch of you didn't like the fact that you had to actually remove the wing nut and stuff like that to get it out. And I actually agree with you. So what I did was on the bottom here, I've removed the, um, the aluminum screws out of there so that now when you undo this, it just actually pops off and you can pop it back on. You never actually have to take the wing nut and the washer off the eyelet. And probably the biggest upgrade and one that to be honest, 
um, I don't 100% love because for me, I usually go backpacking with like a handkerchief or a pair of gloves or something. Now these are in really bad shape, I know. And this is a left hand one on my right hand. Um, but what I did is I 3D printed um, handles and put them in there. So on the back and on the front, you have a nice smooth handle now to hold on to. It's actually very comfortable. You can see if you can see how nice that is. And in the handle, I implemented the anti-rotation um, slot, which helps the blade stay stiff and straight. And with all those features outlined to you, uh, current weight of this is 5.5 ounces, and I think we give it a test. What do you think? Yeah? It's very windy. I hope it's not... I hope you guys can hear me well. Also, did you see that dead skunk? So I'm pretty sure you guys remember how this works. What we do is we take my tried and true, I can't remember how long this was. I'll have to measure when I get home. I think it's 18 inches. This is the one that basically is like a chainsaw for me. It weighs about a pound. We take that one and we compare it to this one using a calculation that I invented, which makes very little sense. And it's called the level of effort. And it's where I multiply the blade length by the number of strokes to come up with a unitless number and somehow I feel that that's appropriate for comparing the performance of these two saws. Let's get started. I usually grab a log that's about three or four inches because I find that that's the you know size that I typically cut on an ultralight adventure. Um, obviously the saw can do bigger but for testing purposes I don't think we need to go much more. Also what I do is I make a cut and I make sure that the cuts are close enough together that the diameter of the wood stays the same so that the comparison of the calculation of the level of effort is equivalent. Let's go. Phase one. So 13 strokes. And then next up, this guy. Now just to be fair, we'll do the test twice because, I don't know, I feel like twice is better, right? The more times, the more, the larger your sample of, I'm going to make something up right now, the larger your sample of data, the more accurate your results. I actually think that's true. That makes sense to me. So let's see. Sixteen. Back to this guy. Nineteen. It's actually cutting good right here. It's got big teeth and it's light, so it's a little bit tough to get started, to be honest. Oh, that cuts nice. That cuts very nice. Whoo! You know, uh... <laughs> A giant branch just fell off a tree over there. Okay, let me get the camera a little bit straighter. How's that? Good sun, looks good. So, the saw cut very well. And again, I do the calculations at home, so you'll have already seen them, but I suspect that the level of effort is quite similar. But before we end the video, I wanted to talk about the suggestions that were made in the comments that I didn't incorporate and why I didn't incorporate them. And probably the number one comment that I got that I didn't incorporate was to lengthen the blade. But let me give you my thoughts on why I don't want a longer blade. First off, 
It's an ultralight saw and it's basically aimed at like backpackers, canoers who are traveling light and fast. Um, typically wouldn't be cutting, you know, eight to 12 inch pieces of timber and then splitting it with an ax. These are uh, individuals who will be having a small fire at night, breaking a lot of stuff with their hands and feet. And then once they get to the three, four, five inch diameter logs, that's when they'll be using the saw. So I will not be making it larger than 12 inches. Furthermore, um, you can get larger saws out there already. There's a ton of really, really good saws. Um, if you're looking for a 21 inch or a 24 inch or even more, if you want to do some big bushcraft, those are fantastic saws. I've got a bunch of saws and I picked the right tool for the job. This one specifically is a minimalist, ultralight backpacker, canoer, climber, whoever it is that doesn't want to carry extra weight. The second thing that came up was making it more robust or bomb proof. Now, in the current form, I would not describe it as delicate. However, some care has to be taken, obviously. It is not a rugged tool that you're gonna throw around, step on, toss in the back of your car. It's a big gust of wind. This is not a rugged tool that you're gonna step on or throw around, things like that. A lot of the ultralight products that I make are specifically designed for people who are gonna handle them with a little bit more care. If you're looking for a robust and rugged bomb-proof saw, there are a lot of outfitters that have a lot of quality pieces of gear that you can pick up there. I'm not trying to recreate what another company is doing. Suluk 46 basically focuses on things with very high strength to weight ratios. That's why there's a lot of titaniums, aluminums, carbon fibers, that sort of thing. That's the niche that I'd like this saw to meet. And then the very last point I wanted to bring up was a lot of you had asked why I don't make it out of titanium. And that's an excellent question because I do make a lot of stuff out of titanium. And I'm gonna to try to explain it in kind of as few sentences as possible. There's a bunch of different reasons, but titanium is uh, very strong, has high, high yield strength, um, very hard. It is heat resistant. What else is it? Oh, and it's very light. <laughs> now, titanium is about 50% stiffer than aluminum, but it's also 50% heavier. So when you're designing a product that's only taking into consideration the stiffness, which with this saw is all we're really looking at, titanium actually doesn't make a better material for it. Aluminum does because it's more cost effective. If we were designing something like the ice axe that has high tensile strength, hardness so it doesn't dent, um, or heat resistant like some of the stoves I make, then those are things that make more sense to be made out of titanium. I think I did a good job explaining that, but when I edit the video, I'll try and cut in and out things. Basically, if you're just designing for deflection or stiffness, titanium and aluminum are very similar, except titanium is like 10 times the cost. So we go with aluminum. So now is the kind of the time where I'm looking for your opinion. If there are any other improvements or design aspects you'd like me to incorporate, uh, I'd appreciate it because you were a huge help last time. I know one thing that's gonna come up is the wing nut. The wing nut, the way it goes on, I had a couple people not like that. I also don't like it, but I don't really have a cost-effective, simple solution um, yet. I'm working on something, but I don't have one yet. So if you really hate that, let me know. But that's also on the Uki Buck saw, and I sell quite a few of those. So if you've gone ahead and commented, let me know your opinion of the saw, then thank you very much for watching. Uh, hit the little like button and the subscribe button. You always have to do that. I'm Steve Evans, and I'll see you on the trail.